Hi there, welcome back to Dr. Lila. This is a channel about college teaching and today we're going to be talking about assessing reading um, in undergraduate classes. Um, reading assessment I think is super important obviously um, but it's not a thing that I personally had any formal training in and so I think it's really helpful all of the good all of the good ideas that I've gotten on assessing reading have come from talking with other um, educators with colleagues and and people that I look up to and actually some of the stuff that I'm going to be talking about today I got from um, elementary and high school teachers so they've had some great ideas as well and and maybe some of these if you're a high school teacher uh, watching you know maybe this will be useful for you I hope it will um, but I do want to just give some ideas and also give some things to think about when creating assessments because I know that that's what's been really helpful for me so just to backtrack, uh, before I started teaching, right before I started teaching, I had a friend uh, who was pursuing his bachelor's degree as an adult, and he was in a political science class uh, where the only assessment that they had was a key terms quiz at the beginning of every class. And I remember like kind of ridiculing it and being like, wow, key terms? Aren't you in college? Isn't that kind of high school? And um, even kind of middle school and just thought, wow, that teacher doesn't know what he's doing. And then I started teaching my first semester, teaching criminology. I had no idea how to assess reading, so I started quizzing them on key terms. And I just thought, wow, this is one of those things where, you know, you think you'll be great at it until you start doing it. You know, you, th you think, oh, I'm so superior, I'd be so much better at that. And then you start doing it and you realize it's actually really hard. Um, so I guess maybe when you're the best teacher is before you have any students <laughs> and you think, you know, you'd be great and you know what all your teachers should have done, you know, that you had growing up. So, um, so yeah, I use the key terms quizzes and shock of a lifetime. They were not that valuable. You know, I didn't feel like they were really giving me a clear sense of anything other than which of my students could memorize definitions really well. Um, and I found that they didn't correlate to the high stakes assessments very well either. So um, I really wanted to do something new. And I knew that pretty early on that I wasn't getting a ton out of the key terms quizzes. Um, and luckily I had a faculty observation that first semester. This absolutely wonderful, wonderful professor, a uh, full-time professor in my department. And I'm an adjunct, so we have to be observed like our first 10 semesters, I think, um, which is great because every time I've had an observation, a faculty observation, my observer has, you know, taught me something. But that first semester, she was just wonderful, and she talked through a lot of ideas with me, including showing me how she assessed reading in her class, which was with a reading journal. And so she said, you know, I give them prompts, but I don't, I give them a lot of prompts. They don't have to answer all of them. And I kind of like let them direct it, and then I use that. I have them do that at the beginning of class and I use that to get the discussion started. So that was the first kind of idea that I started thinking about for the my second semester. Um, and so for the second semester I used these, this is a, a worksheet which I don't think she did but I found it easy um, to do it like this. And so these are prompts, you can see there's not really lines and it doesn't kind of tell you how much you have to write, but um, I would tell students try to fill out two or three of the prompts. and I assume that you cannot, you couldn't read these even if I held it up close, so I'll just tell you the prompts say, um, I was most interested in, I drew connections between, I wanted to know more about, I was unclear on, I struggled to understand, I had to reread the part about, um, and then the bottom has a space for them to put in like new concepts and ideas, and um, I had students fill these out at the beginning of every class for the first 10 minutes. Um, and so they did two of these per chapter because we had two classes per chapter. And then I would read them. And I think, you know, with a, a general rule that's worked for me really well with low stakes assessment, which obviously is what we're talking about, is that immediate feedback. So um, I would grade these right away and return them to them. And it was just like, you know, when there's a couple of tests really far apart, it's I think it's a lot easier for students to fall behind and to not and not feel confident in their performance like they know how they're doing. So it's, you know, it's nice to be able to give them that quick regular feedback. So that those were helpful. And, you know, I found the 10 minutes giving them um, to sit there actually really encouraged discussion because 
Okay, let's be real, right? Some, some of your students are just not going to do the reading no matter what you do. Um, and I did not find that giving them 10 minutes encouraged anybody to skip the reading and just do it then. I think the ones who were going to read, they read ahead of time. The ones who were not, they had 10 minutes to figure out what they were supposed to have read. So we were working from a textbook that they were supposed to bring with them to class and um, they could take those 10 minutes and in theory refresh their memory on what they had already read and fill that out. Um, but if not that, then take the 10 minutes and see what, you know, go through the um, subheadings at least and see what they were supposed to have been reading about. Um, so it was helpful. It got it got people's heads in the game. It got them to class on time. Um, but it wasn't, you know, I knew it wasn't as good as it could be. So the next semester, this is something that an elementary school um, friend, teacher friend shared with me was like a the idea of a graphic organizer, which is similar to what that is, but this is a little more structured. So it looks like this. It's a chart. These are double-sided and um, I would do, they have room to do, to put in information about five major concepts and so it would be on each side so we would do five concepts per class, um, ten concepts per chapter, which is not to say that there were only ten important concepts in the chapter, but if they got ten out of every chapter that's that was pretty good. So um, what this looks like is it has space, like I said, for the five concepts across the top and um, the page number where that concept is introduced. Then they have uh, room to write the definition of the concept, any researchers or criminologists associated with that concept, what this concept attempts to explain, I'm going to come back to that in a second, and questions I still have about this concept. So um, as far as what this concept attempts to explain, I think this is one of those boxes where you really have to talk th students through what you're looking for. And really what I was looking for was like to get them to take a step back and instead of just memorizing the definition and who's associated with it, to kind of get perspective and like put the concept in context, right? So to know that, you know, at its most very basic level, like differential association theory attempts to explain why certain people commit crimes, right? I mean, it just that basic, just to you know, just because you can rattle off a definition doesn't mean you really understand, like, where that concept lives in the world, you know, in that field that you're studying. So, um, but then again, that was the box that they struggled with the most. And they used to raise their hand all the time and say, uh, can you help me through this one? I don't, I still don't get what I'm supposed to be writing here. So, I mean, that could be that I didn't explain it very well, or it could be, as I suspect, that that's a kind of a hard thing for undergrads because they're used to, especially early undergrads who are just coming out of high school where they're having to like memorize large volumes of information and don't always have a context or at least the, the concepts that they're learning in college have a different kind of context than what they learned in high school. So, um, but those were good. And I think I'd probably use these again if I taught criminology again, but I'm teaching, like I've said a few times, I, I'm teaching qualitative research. And so we're reading a lot more academic articles, um, book chapters on methodology. So I didn't want to use the graphic organizers. And also I have juniors and seniors who are a little bit more um, able to just like handle more writing and, and less, who just don't need like the graphic organizer as much and can handle something a little bit more difficult. So what I do now is I give quizzes. And the way when I started, I went back to giving quizzes, but these are they have to actually write short, not short essays, but they have to write paragraphs. Um, and when I started out, I would do three questions on the reading. I'd give them the reading assignment and three questions at the same time. And the three questions would be things that, um, you know, where I would feel like if they can answer these three things about this reading, then they've grasped the general idea or they've grasped, you know, some of the important um, some of the important concepts or like the overall thrust of the argument, the thesis. So I would write three questions like that. When I gave this last semester, um, I would put three and let them choose two. So we're trying it now where I give them three and I choose two. <laughs> I choose which are the two um, that'll be on there and then they have to answer those. But they had all three in advance. So there's, you know, there's no re reason why they should feel surprised because that meatloaf those two out of three ain't bad I don't know I think I think it's a pretty good setup because 
it makes it directs them to more than kind of the two questions but it's a little bit I mean I can do that in 10 minutes I don't think I could do three questions all three in 10 minutes um, so that's working for me well now and uh, I think you know th those are very helpful for me in terms of assessing understanding and also seeing I mean you do have some students who are great at replicating exactly what they read but you can tell they don't totally understand it or um, you can encourage them still to learn how to put things in their own words so that's good um, so I guess just to hit some of the points I and mean, maybe you don't want to use these exact assessments or you're in a field where these wouldn't work um, but I can just give you some of the principles or the I don't know just like the the basic ideas that I use to guide the design of these um, and I think if I didn't say already I mean I, I do think it's important I did say this to mix low stakes and high stakes assessments so I think the low stakes with the quick immediate feedback are great um, and high stakes are important too but you know the tests and essays that maybe that's maybe that's for a different video um, so you know I think one thing that I really try to think about is what's going to be valuable for them to do where the actual action of doing it is valuable not just getting my feedback on it so not just finding out later if they got it right or wrong but that actually the process of doing it is going to bring something to them before they even get my feedback um, and I mean that's what we all want in our assessment right but I guess the ways um, that I try to do that are to think about how um, how I can use the assessment to direct reading not just measure it right not just sit them down in front of the chapter and like hope for the best and then see how they did but actually with these with these quizzes where I have the questions I try to point them in the direction of the major things I want them to get out of the assignment um, and I think that also helps you know I've got I don't know where juniors and seniors are at other schools but I do have some at my school who haven't read academic articles before or they've read them and have not mastered what it was that they were supposed to be getting out of them so they get really they can get really overwhelmed when they sit down in front of an academic article and like maybe read the first sentence 80 times and then um, give up <laughs> which uh, honestly I can remember doing myself a few times with a couple of <laughs> readings in college um, so you know I can understand that but I think when you give them what they're supposed to be looking for it can be a little bit you know, it can encourage the ones that aren't as confident. Um, I also like if they can accomplish more, if the assessment can accomplish more than one thing. So with all of these, I encourage punctuality. They have to be done in the first 10 minutes of class. Um, so, and they can't be made up. So I'm really, I'm a huge softy. I'm terrible about enforcing deadlines. And if somebody wants to give me something late, I usually take it, but I don't take these late. I just draw a really hard line in the sand with the syllabus on the first day and let them know, can't turn these in late, got to be here on time. Um, so they they do encourage attendance and they encourage punctuality. Um, in some cases, uh, I think in the case of this one, this served as a good study guide for students. So in terms of like what more can it do other than just let me see how much they've read or how much they understood, um, I did see in review sessions students pulling those out and using them as study guides. So that made me feel like... Um, you know, if they can refer back to it, then it was a good use of their time in the first place beyond just, you know, for me to evaluate. Um, I do think that it is important to try to find a way to leave room for students to express confusion or ask questions, not just demonstrate mastery and understanding. So, I mean, you're inevitably, almost inevitably, you're going to have think points that they don't understand and you want to know what they are. Um, not just, you know, make it so that they have to pretend like they got everything or not pretend, but just like fake it through the answer. So that's why in this one I had questions I still have. And on this one I had these three where you could talk about what you were unclear on or what you had to reread. And those are helpful both for letting the student be a little self-aware about what was a challenge versus, you know, what they understood. And it also helps you um, because I more often than not, if I leave room for that, seven or eight people say the same thing. And so then I can think, okay, did I go over that in class today? You know, after you get it, did I go over that? And if not, like that's something to touch on in the next class and to circle back and make sure that we, you know, um, covered that. Um, 
And then, I mean, I think that this is like maybe just uber a practical suggestion, but they should be easy to grade. If you're going to do these, like I did some of these every single class. I do the quizzes every week, but I did these reading journals every class. You're going to have a ton to grade and you don't want to be agonizing over the grades. So um, I think it was, yeah, it was these. I used to grade these on, a, on from one to five. And it was like, I got to a point where I was like, really agonizing over like what was a two versus a three versus a four and I was just like what this is out of five this does not need to be this complicated so when I switch to these and I do the same thing with the quizzes I just do and this is real high school I just do check plus check check minus right check plus is 10 out of 10 a check is 8 out of 10 check minus is 6 out of 10 and you can also get a zero um, if you need one um, but it makes it a lot faster to grade and it makes you know it's enough feedback that they can the ones that feel motivated by that kind of feedback are motivated um, but it's not going to bog you down with a ton of grading so um, I do think you know you you want to design it so that it's easy for you to get through and that you're not being buried under paperwork um, I'm not really at a point where I feel like my TA can grade these for me um, but I also have an undergrad as a TA so if you have graduate students obviously you know, something that's easy for them to grade would be super. Um, but if you're like me and you have to do the grading yourself, you definitely want to make it easy. So those are just some things to think about in terms of assessment. Um, I had my third class tonight and I think it went pretty well. I'm starting to, you know, I said to one of the commenters on my last video, um, I said to her, like, sometimes the best thing you can say is, like, they stared at me for an hour and then we all went home, right? Sometimes you have no idea because everybody's just giving you this blank expression. And I would, you know, sometimes people ask me, like, oh, how did class go? And I'm like, oh, I'm not really sure. And they kind of are like, well, why are you being, like, why the false modesty? And I'm like, no, I really don't know. They just stared at me and that was the end. Um, and maybe two people asked questions or participated. But for the third class in, like, I have a lot of students participating and I think I know like 75% of their names pretty confidently so I feel good about that it's only the third class and I did you know I felt like uh, people were home tonight and I had fewer people sleeping than last time <laughs> I don't have a lot of people sleeping but it is warm in the room and I do see people even ones who are participating will not off occasionally but I didn't see it today so that was um, a confidence booster for me uh, so anyway, if you, I, I would love to hear just other ideas about assessment. Um, oh, I will also say I handed back their first quiz tonight. I think it's important to hand back the first one before you give the second one so that they understand your expectations. Um, so I handed those back, saw lots of looks of despair, tried to get everyone to calm down because literally every quiz is like 1% of their grade. It's not a big deal. Um, but... I also appreciate that they're taking it seriously. I'm definitely not mad about that. Um, but yeah, if you've got other methods of assessment that have worked for you, like I said at the beginning, like getting ideas from other educators and, and colleagues was what helped me the most. So if you've got things that work for you, um, even if it's in you know another field that you want to leave in the comments, that would be great. Um, and definitely any suggestions for videos or, or questions, uh, if anything that I said was unclear, I'd be happy to get. And uh, thank you for watching. I hope this was helpful.